Hello and welcome to RF Pro 5 minutes tutorial. This is tutorial 6 on understanding component roles in RF Pro, which is going to be very, very useful in your practical design work. Now, before we start, remember one, two, three, subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's spend next few minutes in understanding this very important concept in RF Pro. Now, in this tutorial, I have a case study where I have this layout assembly of a six layer laminate board. And on top of that, you can see I have placed two layout components. And if we push inside, they have their own corresponding layout design with the corresponding layout pins. Now, if we look at the main ADS window and look at these designs, which we just spoke about, each of these design have the layout view, a schematic view, and a symbol view. Now, depending upon how we want to use these components in our EM analysis, we can choose their roles accordingly. Now, this feature was never possible in ADS before or any other tool for that matter, but RF Pro makes it very, very easy. Once we launch the design in RF Pro, you can see all the complete layout assembly and all the components you have on your layout marked as components. Now this might include your transmission line, your BJT, FETs, diodes, and all kinds of devices, depending upon the target application. Now each of these components can have you know, three different roles. You can use a circuit view, which is basically nothing but a schematic view, sub-design or layout. Both sub-design and layout are used when you really want to use it in your EM simulation. If you don't want that component or that part of your design to be EM simulated, you can simply switch the view to circuit view. And when you do that, notice the icon changes here, and then the, the layout um, goes away, and then you now have just a simple black box. And with that black box, you can see uh, that has two pins because it was a two port device. In case you're working with FET or MOSFETs, you may have three or four pins corresponding to that component. Now the hierarchy is retained, the information is retained. Now the question is, how does RF Pro knows uh, when you load the design in this RF Pro environment, which component to mark as a schematic, which component to mark as sub-design or a layout? This is done by setting up some options. So if you go to tools, options, here under component, we do have some recognition rule and you can assign your own keyword so that RF Pro can identify and then classify them in a typical role by default so that you don't need to switch back and forth. But in case you, you are using some specific nomenclature, you can add your own keywords here for RF Pro to remember you know, the partitioning and then assigning the corresponding role. All right, so now once the role is defined and I do not want to EM simulate it, but this is part of my entire layout design. So after I perform EM simulation, I create the equivalent schematic. I would like this connectivity information to retain and this component to be part of my overall schematic design. That can be very simply done after you mark it as a schematic or circuit role. You can drag and drop it under component models and notice whether you are doing a full EM or a user defined EM, the component models is common between them. Now in full EM, the only difference is because you're anyway going to simulate the entire layout, you don't need any other action and you can now simply create a port set up your frequency sweep options, select the solver, and you can go ahead and run the simulation. In user defined, however, you are only selecting a specific portion of the design. And if you added this component and the component model, the pin has the connectivity with certain traces on your layout. And you can see those are also connected as soon as, or those are also added in the analysis as soon as you add component. So now you have this entire definition of the path defined. If you want to add more nets into your analysis, feel free to do so. And you know, using the same logic, you can choose whether you want to EM simulate or you do not want to EM simulate. Now in a case where you want to EM simulate the path, but you have this layout component and notice this filter is still a layout component. And if you also want to simulate this path along with the earlier path we selected, then this layout component 
can be dragged and dropped under parts. Now, this is not necessary if you are running full EM. In full EM, if the component definition is layout, it will anyway be EM simulated. But in case of user defined, I need to add it under parts and then the corresponding nets which are connecting to that layout component, I could simply select them, drag and drop it under nets, add the ground net into my analysis. And now I have my whole definition complete. I can create a port at the desired location. I can set up my option, set the frequency sweep, select the momentum or FEM simulator and set their corresponding options. And I can go ahead and run the simulation. Everything is nice and clean. Now, if you want to see in user define what portion you have exactly selected and you are actually simulating, you can simply right click on user define, select highlight all and it will highlight all the portion of the design which you have added and you are actually performing an EM simulation on. Now, as soon as you are happy with this, you can go ahead and, and proceed with the rest of the simulation. And by using this logic, you can see you can completely uh, mix and match how you want layout to be simulated without even touching your layout or modifying your layout. All this is done within RF Pro, retaining your original design database as it is. And that's the very powerful capability of RF Pro you know, simplifying the job of designers by a great amount and saving them hours and hours of simulation time and preparation time for their, design, for their designs. So that's all for this video. I hope you like the content presented and some of these will be very useful for your actual simulation work. Stay tuned for more videos to increase your knowledge on RF Pro and explore all the great capabilities it offers you. Thanks a lot.